Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, the Switch is here, baby! It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, joined as always by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how are you? Doing pretty good. How are you, Patrick? I am also doing pretty good. Um, I feel like I have overcome my sickness. I'm getting there. Yeah. I'm getting there. Let's do a, a high five where we s- spread germs back. Yeah, <laughs> let's just remember not to touch our faces with these hands now. I, I don't know that I can make that promise. <laughs> no, you didn't ask me to promise, but I don't know if I could do that. I touch my face a lot, I feel like. Yeah, me too. Um, I have a beard, and I I often like mm-hmm. stroke, stroke my beard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, also I do the same with um, my mustache, which is I guess part of my beard. Um, but every now and then I'll just find like uh, mustache hairs that are just mysteriously longer than the rest of them, and then I just like play with that one hair. Do you think it's because when you were and I'm not impugning you in any way, but when you were like trimming it or cutting it, you missed did one? a bad job. <laughs> absolutely not what i said that's not what i said uh or do you think that one's just like got the juice or something and is like Uh, growing a little faster so that does sound ridiculous but maybe that is what's happening because i don't i don't do a lot of uh eyebrow maintenance uh but you have really nice eyebrows thank you like if you if you had told me nice of you to say if you had told me that you did do eyebrow maintenance i would believe you they're nice eyebrows well thank you Every now and then, one eyebrow hair, or two or three, get ambitious, and is suddenly a full inch longer than its peers. Like, so long. Just one eyebrow hair? Eyebrow lash? I don't know what you call an individual piece of eyebrow. Eyebrow? Uh, Are the individual, like... I don't think each one is a brow. Great. Good. That's a good point. (laughs) Then they'd be your eyebrows. I guess they are your eyebrows. Look, we don't know. Joy-Con, <laughs> Nintendo, Nintendo Switch, Switch si- console. Console systems? I thought it was systems. Oh, man. We need to <laughs> just go all the way back to the beginning on this one. <laughs> Weather uh, report? Yeah. Uh, pleasant. Pleasant yeah. in LA. Uh, no longer raining. No longer cold. Though it was over the weekend, which made it perfect to stay in and play the Nin- switch, switch. <laughs> i was gonna you say were, nintendo yeah, yeah 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 by that time i'd already committed that's so. all right uh yeah so that answers the question what have you been playing we've been playing uh a lot of nintendo switch um but i think we'll get into what our actual experiences are uh with the machine and those games it, during our, our topic which is obviously just talking about our first weekend with the nintendo switch um but uh, what else have we been playing here, Mark? We've been playing the original uh, Legend of Zelda for NES. That's right. The 1986 The Legend of Zelda. Um, and you can play along with us. Uh, first episode of that is coming out um, this week, Thursday. Uh, apologies for missing last week. Mark was sick. I was sick. And no, I was sick. I mean, we ended up both being we sick. We were both sick. <laughs> We we're both sick and negligent in our duties, I think, is, <laughs> is what it all boils down to. Um, but yeah, we're, we're getting started now. We do the first three dungeons um, in, this, uh, in this episode. Also, we say that we'll do the next four and therefore finish the game in the subsequent episode. Not a thing. Not a thing, because there are, in fact, nine dungeons and not seven. My memory was failing me. So this next episode will be uh, one, one, two, three, and then after that will be uh, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine to the end. And it, it probably won't take you too long to do the first three dungeons. No, we did it in just about an hour, um, maybe even less. And I think that was slow because I was not playing super well. No, Mark was playing real bad. No, Mark, you were doing a great job. The game's not easy. Uh, <laughs> no, I was doing kind of a bad job. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so if you have an hour, uh, play along with us. It's been great. Yeah, and it's available on all platforms except, of course, the Switch, which, which of has course, no virtual console. <laughs> Mark, let's get into the news. All 
All right, so last week's Nindy Showcase, and I'm sticking with that pronunciation. I don't know how else you would pronounce it. Revealed a bunch of new games for Switch. Uh, so, exciting. A bunch of new games coming to the Switch. Uh, or previously unannounced. A lot of these aren't... Uh, I mean, they're all like new or new-ish. Um, and some are exclusive to the thing, and some are just timed exclusive. Some are, you know, there's just another version of this thing uh, coming to the platform. Yeah, but they seem for a, to be focusing a lot on games that are about to be released or released in the future, and not so much ports of old indie games, which are also coming, but this was not yeah. so much focused on that. Yeah, like we don't see uh, something for like Inside here or, you know, Limbo being ported to yet another <laughs> platform or anything like that. Yeah, it's, it's all like kind of newer or very like within the last year um, games. So I th- think they named 15 or 16 um, games uh, coming out o- over the course of 2017 um, in, in the Nindy Showcase. So let's just hit these. And if we have anything to say about them, um, then we just do that then. Great. So the video starts with a trailer for SteamWorld Dig 2 um, coming out in the summer of, of this year. Um, looks pretty cool. Uh, it looks like a, a Metroidvania kind of meets the Lost Vikings. Like it's got a little bit of that like puzzly element to it. I have not played the first SteamWorld Dig, but uh, a lot of people really love it. Yeah. I'm in that same boat where uh, it seems like a cool game, but I've never put any time into it. There's also like a uh, the same developer makes a series of games called like Steam World Heist, or maybe one game called Steam World mm-hmm. Heist, and that's on the 3DS, I believe, and also has a really good reputation. Yeah, so it might be one worth checking out uh, this summer. Uh, video moves on to Ukulele. Um, which they describe as coming out in both 2017 and, quote, very soon. Well, the uh, release for yeah, the ukulele the on release? other platforms, I think, comes out next month. Uh, I think it's that April. Might be right. That might be right. Um, so, and we know the Switch is coming a little bit later. So the, the Switch version has some added functionality, some multiplayer, um, like local multiplayer. Um, it looks kind of just like mini games, maybe. Like the, the video that they show is... Uh, four yuka lalies like running up a like you know just sort of like north and south track um so it it, it seems like it's not going to be like meaty 3d platforming with multiple players um it'll just be like something else that you can pull out and play together i'm, I'm saying it's probably going to be throwaway multiplayer um are you did you play banjo kazooie are you yeah. a banjo kazooie kid i'm a banjo kazooie kid uh, Only 90 kids will remember Banjo-Kazooie. <laughs> is, that, is that when ba- Banjo came out? Is the 90s sometime? I That's feel like be right. it had to have it been had true. To be. <laughs> when else would it have been, Patrick? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I love Banjo-Kazooie. Um, never played Banjo-Tooie. Um, and, uh, you know, I suffered through much of Donkey Kong 64 because it had a lot of that same uh, pedigree and um, whatever. I'm very excited about, uh, about ukulele. Are you... Um, into that at all or no i was never really into rares n64 collectathon games mm-hmm. um so uh, honestly i'll probably be passing on ukulele but you can just play it over at my place yeah or when i bring my switch out somewhere else and then we can play these crappy two-player games together <laughs> uh next up uh the video shows off overcooked special edition which was on your list well when we talked last week right yeah it was uh, that I was like, Overcooked seems like a no-brainer for this. Um, so it's exciting to see that uh, they agree with me and <laughs> that the, this game will be coming out there. It's, so it, it's the whole, it's all the DLC um, and it supports two to four players and that that HD rumble um, is also built into it in, in some capacity. I'm super excited for this. Uh, it seems like it's going to be a great a, like local multiplayer throw it down and just play it wherever you are i i hadn't really heard of it it looks really fun yeah so it, it's all like you have to work together in in a kitchen and like someone's chopping vegetables while you're boiling the water or, you know whatever preparing the spices um and like if your partner isn't ready with like some piece of it i, I just hear it as a, a like maddening tearing families <laughs> apart sort of game so I, I i look forward to fighting with everyone i know while playing this game uh, then next up is the Escapist 2, 
Escapists 2. Um, it looks like it's a top-down prison escape game um, with kind of an old-timey 8-bit or 16-bit um, aesthetic. A lot of these games actually fall under um, that category of being like uh, with a, a retro kind of pixel art aesthetic. Um, there was a first Escapist. I never played it. No idea. Uh, next up is a game called Goner, um, also just generically coming out sometime in 2017, which uh, looks to be a sort of like puzzle platformer with um, those kind of uh, melancholy storytelling elements like Inside or Limbo, um, where it's just like it's a little weird um, and I don't know, looks looks sort of neat, but we'll have more probably impressions on that as we get closer to it. Um, Next up here is Dandara. Uh, kind of looks similar uh, to, to Goner, uh, uh, but with the kind of pixel art um, uh, aesthetic. Um, and maybe with a little bit more like Metroidvania. Like it looks kind of cool, action packed um, platforming. Um, and then a game called Kingdom uh, Two Crowns. The Two Crowns just being like the, the name for the version of it with um, two player co op. Yeah, and that seems well. That I like that. I like that some of these games are adding a like multiplayer and co op aspect. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of a lot of games can like find a new life, um, both a on the Switch and b with two player functionality. Like, there's something very appealing about having taking this thing out and just being like, "Do you want to play a game with me?" Um, it's very successful at that. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't think either of us really have a, a lot to say about uh, Goner, Dandara, or um, Kingdom Two Crowns, but good to know that that stuff is is coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, next on the list here is Runner Three. It's the newest entry in the Bit Trip Runner series. Um, it's a uh, 3D graphics. I don't remember the series ever being that. I always thought it was like just a uh, the kind of indie 2D mm -hmm. runner platformer. Um, <clears throat> next on the video is the Blaster Master. Oh, wait, Zero. Runner. <coughs> oh, and Runner Three is a Switch exclusive. Oh yes, yes, that's right. Um, were those exclusive to Nintendo previously? Uh, no one knows. I don't know. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but still good to note uh, that there's um some of this stuff is. Uh, Switch exclusive. That I think is the first one on mm -hmm. the list that is like confirmed as exclusive. Um, Master Blaster Zero. Um, so this is coming from Inti Creates, the the guys that did um, Mega Man Nine and Ten, um, along with uh, bu a bunch of other games. Um, so it's like a, a an eight bit D make of Blaster Master. Um, it looks like really cool, kind of like arcadey um, scrolling. Um, both side scrolling and top down kind of action. Uh, this is also an exclusive. Uh, it's also coming to the 3DS, but like Switch and 3DS, and it comes out Thursday, right? It comes out Thursday because <laughs> I think it was a a launch title in Japan. Oh, interesting. I did I did not know that. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, if you've already played all of your Switch launch titles and you're like, I'm done. I don't know what to play on this thing. First of all, how did you play that much Zelda? <laughs> Uh, and second of all, you've got a, another game you can play uh, come Thursday. Now, Flipping Death looks pretty cool. Yeah, Flipping Death looks dope. It's uh, like a platform adventure puzzle kind of game um, where the protagonist uh, dies at the beginning and then spends her whole time as a ghost possessing the living to help ghosts with, her pro with their problems. Um, and it's written by the uh, Dinosaur Comics writer uh ryan north um who also writes uh, marvel's squirrel girl comic right now is that is this game already out on other platforms i don't think so i i might be wrong though um i mean regardless it looks super cool um and i like ryan north so i'll i'll pick that one up i think uh next up here is the graceful explosion machine um, that's just a timed exclusive. It's like a side-scrolling arcadey kind of space shooter. Um, we'll get through the rest of these, I promise. Um, Mr. Shifty, <laughs> which is Mr. Shifty, <laughs> <laughs> um, looks like a uh, another like top-down um, kind of perspective, but you're teleporting through stuff. It's like a, a stealth action game. 
Um, seems kind of cool if maybe a little bit limited. Um, ditto uh, Tumble Seed looks kind of cool if maybe a little bit limited, um, where you're controlling a, a platform that a seed is rolling around on. Um, and it, it looks an awful lot like it's it's based on like motion controls, but it's actually a, a two stick um, kind of thing. I heard an interview with um, one of the guys where at the studio that does um, that does this uh, tumble seed, saying that um, they did the dual stick as like a, a precision thing. Like it's it's not actually. It looks like it's a casual game, but it's actually more an intense experience. Wait, so it's motion controls or dual? No, it looks so the the way that when you look at the game, it looks like you're just tilting the like you you can imagine that the person playing the game is just like tilting the game pad around. Um, but in in reality, it's uh you're lifting like the left and right sides oh, of the platform with, I with see. the sticks. Yeah. Um. So. I don't know. Uh, again, I'm uh, not not totally crazy on on the idea. Um, Shakedown Hawaii. Uh, Mark, you ever play Retro City Rampage? No. Yeah, me neither. Um, Retro City Rampage was you know an eight bit style game. This is a spiritual successor to that. So it is a sixteen bit style running and shooting and causing trouble kind of game. Um, here's one I'm super excited about: uh, Pocket Rumble. Um, which is a, a, a console exclusive to the Switch, so I don't know if that means it's coming to um, uh, like phones or computers or whatever. But it <clears throat> it looks like a Neo Geo Pocket uh, fighting game, like it's a it, and it looks like it plays like an old SNK fighting game, and it's just a two button input um, and supports local and online multiplayer. The online multiplayer is uh, powered by GGPO, the um, like net code or whatever that was supporting uh street fighter 4 and the re-release of street fighter 3 on on play on playstation 3 um that's just very it's uh there's like no lag in it um so it could be for some like actual legit um competitive fighting so i'm excited about this thing that looks really cool uh war groove which is the next game yeah looks really cool it's basically a medieval like advanced wars game which we need more advance wars in our life, and so I'm glad somebody is picking up that slack. Right. Well, because uh, intelligence systems is just like we've got fire emblem, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it looks it looks really cool. Uh, there's um, again local and online multiplayer. There's a map editor, um, so you can uh, you know it'll it'll in addition to being war groove, it'll be war groove maker. Um, so that's neat. And then the last thing on the list... Our long national nightmare is over. Or will be <laughs> summer of 2017. When Stardew Valley... Yeah! Um, comes to the Switch. That's so exciting. I am so excited. Uh, it'll be the first version, version of the game to support multiplayer. Great. It's, it seems... It's, a, it's an exciting lineup of games. Like, yeah. You know, I'm... I'm probably going to pick up like a th at least a third of these well it seems like a lot of them are coming out in like summer too so fairly soon yeah summer summer's not that far away right no <laughs> it's really not right it's march yeah it's it's march we just have april and april's got mario kart in it right um and then may ooh, may mark huh? <laughs> Ugh, may ah Ugh. And then, for some reason, I have Splatoon 2 coming out in June. But that's not true. It's just summer sometimes, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's right. Why do, why do I think it's August? I don't know. Yeah. I think they just said summer. They may have just said summer. <laughs> um, is that also when the, uh, the online is supposed to be like up and actually... That's fall. Fall. Okay. Um, I sort of assume that they're going to coincide. That Splatoon... Well, not necessarily because Mario Kart has to have yeah. online, and that'll be April. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, the I meant the uh, the pay service of it, right? Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> well, we we will see. But yeah, bunch of games. So, uh, speaking of which, Nintendo of Europe seemingly slipped into into a press release that Bloodstained: Ritual of the Night is coming to Switch. Now. Help me, uh, Bloodstained. It's like that the kickstarted, the yeah, yeah. Um, that's like not Castlevania, but is Castlevania. Yeah. Um. Cool. What? Uh. Any any 
like other lead on on what what or when that is or well it's not supposed to come out at all until 2018 great (laughs) (laughs) so it could be a switch game i hope it's a switch game did you play any of the uh like ds or gba Mm -mm. um metroidvanias not all of them are amazing but all of them are baseline good and some and a couple of them are pretty great uh yeah i mean and i've this game looks uh or has looked pretty cool every time um i've seen like video or or still of it stills of it um so yeah i hope it comes to switch uh speaking with new york times reporter nick wingfield reggie says the friday through saturday sales for nintendo switch exceeded the first two-day sales in america for any system in nintendo history so basically in the first two days it's the largest launch that nintendo has had can that be true more than the wii yeah the second biggest was the wii no the wii was super comp- supply constrained sure sure okay i get yeah that that's fair that tracks um and zelda for nintendo switch was the best-selling standalone launch title so like not games like wii sports uh beating super mario 64 so this is surprising to me oh i guess if, if it's just going by raw numbers and not by percentage um so just wondering if you're buying the Nintendo 64 at launch and you're not buying Mario 64. I mean, the I was going to say, what are you playing? But the answer is Pilot Wings because that was <laughs> the, literally the only other game you could have purchased at launch. Well, yeah. So we don't know about attach rate because if it was the biggest ever. Right. And the attach rate could be worse than the N64 t- attach rate, but still sell more copies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, now, what that means exactly is nothing, right? <laughs> but yeah. It, but, uh, <clears throat> so in the UK, it's, uh, it's sold yeah, give me about some, Give 80, me some UK numbers. So it sold about 80K. Okay. To put that in context, the Wii U sold about 40K. Uh, the Wii sold 105,000, the 3DS sold 113,000, the PS4 sold 250,000. Uh, so o- over, over what period is that? Oh, that's oh, just like launch, week. launch Okay. Yeah. Um, but people were like stores and retailers were referring to the Switch launch as strong, steady performance. So th- it's much better than the Wii U. Again, what does this mean? Nothing. Nothing at this point. Right. Uh, but also, Europe and the UK have never been big Nintendo uh, locations. Yeah, sure. That's largely uh, uh, Japan and um, America's Yeah, like, the, like yeah. the NES didn't hit as big in Europe and the UK specifically as it did in... And I know we have listeners from the UK, so definitely tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, like just write in to Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail dot com and tell Mark wh- how wrong he is and where he can shove it. <laughs> uh, so Breath of the Wild had a seventy eight percent attach rate on Switch in the UK, um, compares to like sixty six percent for Twilight Princess on the Wii, and UK sales for the week Breath of the Wild was second, One Two Switch was fourth, and Super Bomberman R was seventh. Huh. Oh, of of all games. Yes. Yeah. I see. Um, did uh, Horizon come out? It came out in uh, first. That's why Zelda was second. Ah, okay. Got mm-hmm. it, got it, got it. And uh, it was the largest launch for a new IP, I think, for Sony ever, but possibly any video game ever. But I, 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 but I le- I'm leaning strongly <laughs> towards Sony. <laughs> But I mean, it it wouldn't be impossible for it to be uh, of any new IP ever, um, just because uh, Sony's got such a strong install base right now. There are like a billion. Uh, I I believe that number is correct. <laughs> at least, <laughs> at least a there billion. is at least one billion PS4s. That's right, in the wild mm-hmm. right now, not on shelves, no. but in people's homes. <laughs> uh, Nintendo plans to reduce the role of friend codes in the future friend codes how is it possible that we are still using friend codes soft launch man soft launch i mean i guess we should have known when super mario run Mm -hmm. and fire emblems heroes required friend code that should have been our first clue 
that something was terribly wrong. Something is amiss. Because in January, Reggie, Reggie, in, Reggie, a, in Reggie. an interview, said, like, basically the friend codes aren't part of the Switch's multiplayer solution. And yet, here we are. Here we are. Mind you, we're not playing multiplayer games yet. Non-excuse. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I, I, don't, I don't think it is. I mean, it's like... It's so weird in January to be like not part of it, and but then obviously the online infrastructure and like whatever the online interface for the Switch doesn't exist yet, or at least it doesn't exist on a on a consumer side yet. There's an eShop, sure, but there's no virtual console. There's no real way to like you can post stuff to Facebook, but that's it. Um, and there's no, and then you can make friends by uh, uh, sending friend codes to each other. And like, that's it, hard stop. Like, that's the only thing that this thing can do online. So it's just, it's just not there yet. Yeah. Is there anything you can do with friends? Like, I, we, you can add friends. And We're then, friends right now. Yeah. <laughs> and can that's I, it. Can I, I can't just send you a message or anything, right? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Anyways, friend codes are apparently eventually going to be phased out. Uh, so it, Nintendo says they have plans to allow friends to add each other through social networks, uh, like the Nintendo network IDs, which is basically like the equivalent of a gamer tag, uh, and then people you've recently played with, and those like that are on like the same network and stuff. So they also say that some games will feature their own in-game friend interface, which I'm guessing is referring to something like Mario Kart, which will be coming out before the full right online solution so and, it may just be like even splatoon right yeah um i kind of think it's i mean i think it's immensely stupid that we still have friend codes yeah i'm glad that i guess the solution is coming down the line i'm guessing like in fall or something right uh but yeah i i mean i'm 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 with you that i i also think it's dumb i am I don't know. I the, this is based on nothing, but I am hopeful that when they do finally drop it, they're going to get it right. Or at least yeah, I'm hopeful. Close to right. Cautiously optimistic. Yeah, I think close to right is probably what we will. Who is like best case scenario? Yeah, I think yes, close to right. And uh, I mean, like, has the friend code thing affected me in any meaningful way? Absolutely. Absolutely. Not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But I still have opinions about it. <laughs> uh, Breath of the Wild amiibo work in new Animal Crossing New Leaf. That's good to hear. That's pretty cool. So uh, the Guardian and Bokoblin will give you ga- like a Ganon. Zelda gives Medley? Yeah, Medley. She's the uh, one of the little bird characters from Wind Waker. Oh, right. She, like plays the harp, I think. Also, I'm really hoping the microphone didn't pick up me like, Snort- Hard sniffling. <laughs> Snorting coke off the table? <laughs> no, just mucus into my own nose. Uh, Do the, you need a Kleenex, Mark? Uh, the you art. can fix this. <laughs> <laughs> Were you going to like force power? <laughs> yeah, or? I was. Uh, the archer link, or archer like on the horseback thing, uh, gives you a link, and then rider. the rider gives you a pona. Uh, so that's a lot of the same. Oh, um, so it's not the it's not the archer on horseback. The rider is on horseback. The archer is just an archer. That makes sense. Um, so I think those are all of the. Um, uh, that's the same content that you can get with the um, rest of the, like thirty oh, anniversary gotcha. amiibos. Um, these are just the the new ones will trigger the same stuff, which is still it's still cool um, that they're doing stuff in um, New Leaf. Sort of weird. This is maybe slightly off topic. No, let's actually move into new releases, and then it'll be part of the same topic. Okay. Uh, March 9th, Thursday. New 3DS. Ex- only on new 3DS e shop is Pink Dot Blue Dot. Like, I tried looking this up. I eventually found it. It's like a, a buck 80. It's, I think it's a puzzle game that's on other platforms. You appear to, like, tap dots to solve some sort of puzzle all right uh, <laughs> on the switch eShop is voez or vos which we talked about last week this is the one that's touch only right yes yeah okay and 
Um, I might have painted the wrong impression of this game. Oh. Because, you know, I, I made it seem like it was exclusively for uh, people who prefer their ladies of the anime variety. Oh, yes. I recall this rant now. And I, I will push back against your characterization of it as a rant. And I will double down! <laughs> <laughs> but I will... Uh, so, apparently the game itself, like, it's a rhythm game that's um, it's supposed to be pretty fun. All right. I think the anime stuff might still stand. I It's hard to tell online, right? You're, like, reading reviews and impressions, and you're like, okay, but also person who's writing this what is your litmus test for or you know like for anime babes yeah you like you want to know how much of a pervert the, the <laughs> no, reviewer is no i'm putting a hard no <laughs> that is words in my mouth that i did not say I'm just saying like like how much do i need to enjoy schoolgirls in nightgowns how much of a pervert <laughs> no that are like no but how much do i need is it should it be important to me for anime girls who are windswept and tempest tossed in love? Is that important to you? <laughs> well, <laughs> not particularly. <laughs> I don't know. It, the game's supposed to be fun. All right, cool. Uh, and then Blaster Master Zero, which we've talked about, comes out on the Switch and 3DS. So it's the and the 3DS that I wanted to talk about for a second. It's a little bit insane to me that stuff is still coming out on the 3DS. We're going to get a Fire Emblem game in a couple months. Um, right now, I don't want to I don't want to pick up my 3DS at all anymore. Yeah, it's basically dead to me. I I mean maybe I'll I'll, I'll probably play the new Fire Emblem game on it, but like it's going to be tough. Well, the Switch is such a just better experience all around. Yeah. I totally agree with that, and we'll get into that uh in our main topic, but for now, Let's get out of the news. Now it's time for a regular segment on our show. It's time for 433. In 1952, American composer John Cage wrote a piece called 433, wherein a performer or a group of performers didn't play their instruments for four minutes and 33 seconds. For the purposes of this show, our instruments are talking about Nintendo. So for the duration of one performance of 433, Mark and I will talk about something not Nintendo-related, thus fulfilling the contract of the piece... Mark, while this performance gets started. Can I call an audible here? Yeah, sure. Okay, so we're going to talk about something else. And we'll keep it in our pocket. Oh. But can I talk about... I just realized I've been dealing with something, and I want your opinion on it. Yeah, okay, let's do this. So for the past two or three days, uh -huh. I've been plagued by the hiccups off and on. What? Yeah. Like, I, to the point where like I had them... Okay, so on... Saturday, uh -huh. I got them really bad when I was at the new Mothership Ikea okay, in Burbank. Yeah, in Burbank. Mm -hmm. um, that is impossibly large. Have you been there? I've not been to the new one yet. They no. have like, they had to have had at least like 50 people working in the parking garage. Whoa. It's to like direct traffic. It's crazy. Anyways, I got the hiccups really bad there and I just could not stop. Do you? <laughs> and then they went away for a little bit. Right. I was eating dinner mm -hmm. back. They went away a little bit for a little bit of dinner, and then they came back again. I went home. They went away, got them twice that night, off and on. The next morning, I woke up, had them a little bit, right? So yesterday, all day yesterday, I was fighting them off and on. Like, they would, it would come, it would go, it would right. come again. And then today is the first day where I've not had the hiccups at all. Knock on wood. I know, and I'm worried that, like, at any moment, they could come back. Right. Uh, well, I was going to make fun of you for saying plagued by hiccups, but I think you're right. I think you are, you are afflicted. Yeah. Um, do you think it has anything to do with like reduced or changed, uh, respiratory abilities because you've been sick that like breathing is different? Yeah. That's the only thing I can think of is like, I'm using my, I'm breathing through my mouth because my nose mm -hmm. is really congested. And so I'm. Breathing, eating, drinking, and sometimes maybe like the breathing to drinking ratio is off. And so you're like swallowing air or something. I don't even think science knows how hiccups happen. Okay, so hiccups is just, it's just a recurring like muscle spasm, right? I don't think anybody knows. Someone must. No, I don't think so. Okay, you and I don't know. <laughs> this, this much is certain. Um, have you been doing any like 
kind of hiccup remedy stuff? Yeah. So I tr- tried a lot. I uh, normally when I get the hiccups, I just like hold my breath and recite the ABCs, and that takes care of it. Uh-huh. Was not taking care of it. Mm. I have found that a spoonful of sugar is helpful. Like, will get rid of the hiccups consistently. They would keep coming back after like uh, an amount of time that would vary, but a spoonful of sugar consistently got rid of the hiccups. Uh, plus, you get to eat a spoonful of sugar. It's not that great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Granulated sugar by itself is not that fun. It's like the time I... So I really love Shirley Temples, which is just Sprite and Grenadine, right? Yeah. And so I was like, oh, Grenadine by itself has to be amazing tasting. Incorrect. Not good. Um, I have found s- some limited success with the uh, hiccup treatment of taking a glass of water. You take a sip of the glass of water. You put the cup down. You rotate it 120 degrees. This sounds like you are. No, no, no. Just wait. <laughs> You're right. It does sound like I am. <laughs> Continue. Take a sip. Put the glass back down. Rotate 120 degrees. Keep going. So it's, it's three times to rotate it all the way around. And it's just to make, to like put your mind in a different like rhythm and pattern mm, that is different mm-hmm. from like the uncontrollable spasm. Like you have to focus on like, is that 120 degrees? Am I doing it right? I'm putting it down. There's like a process that happens over and over again. This sounds like a nicer version of the have somebody scare you back then. But we'll never but know. But we'll never know if it's nicer or less nice. Uh, we were accompanied today by the EBU uh, Your Radio Orchestra. So thank you to that. And we're going to save this, com- this other conversation topic for next time. It's deleted from our notes. <laughs> no one will ever know what it was. No. So uh, don't even bother trying to hack our Google Drive. Oh, Mark, you're giving away too much already that, w- <laughs> that we use a Google Drive. Uh, you want to get into our, our main topic of Let's the day? Let's do it. Let's do it. Switch! Switch. Uh, so, Mark, let's talk about this thing. We got it. Mm-hmm. Picked it up. Thursday night slash yep. Friday morning. Yep. Both picking it up from the same Best Buy. Yep. Uh, Mark had the foresight to get there. Well, what time did you get there? I got there a little after 1130. And then, so you were out of there by like 12. 1230. Yeah. So you were, okay. Um, I got there just a little bit before you left. So I was there just a little bit after midnight and I didn't leave until almost two. Yeah. That's gross. The Best Buy did not have a line situation worked out. Uh, and also, what is with Best Buy, uh, the, the cashier experience? It's so slow. Like, when you're there and they have your stuff, it's just like, you're just talking to someone for like eight minutes. <laughs> it is, they, and you got to like decline the credit card and they got to like ask you for your phone number and all this stuff that just like, did I've, you, I've been to other midnight <laughs> launches this before. time. Did you, you had to pay? You had to swipe no. your credit card? No. Oh, okay. I mean, wait. Yes, I did because I added a, a pro controller. Oh, okay. Um, but the whole thing took way longer than uh, I, I thought it should have. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm not. I'm not imputing the nice people at Best Buy the way Patrick is. I will. Is. <laughs> I am coming in hot. I had a general Best Buy. <laughs> I had a generally fine launch experience. I agree. It was, but it was it was slow. But I was towards the front of the pre order line, so yeah. it didn't feel as bad to me i think if i was in your shoes i would be kind of infuriated yeah it was pretty infuriating also it was kind of chilly outside it was chilly it's late we're old we need to be in bed i need to be in bed like by 10 30 i mean i i was like i'm excited for this uh but i don't know that i want to pick it up tonight i think i don't know if i'd rather sleep yep 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 um so we're a lot of fun at parties oh tons of fun (laughs) um did you uh, do anything with it that night? Like yeah, when got so I did set it up, um, and so I could download Zelda, mm-hmm. and all of that was and Stimper Clips, and all of that was a super smooth experience, except for the fact that I couldn't, I can never remember my Nintendo ID password. Sure. Uh, but other than that, I thought it was a, like the um update that you have to download to like unlock the on like was immediate yeah, so like quick. all like I, so i was very impressed because that was my worry was that zelda was going to take forever to download because their servers would be 
like knocked out of action. Yeah. But I was very impressed with the entire set of experience. I thought it was went really quickly. Yeah, and there's no weird curveballs in there. Like Nope. You don't have to do any weird calibrations or I mean it's all just exactly what you expect it to be. Um and yeah, the the update itself doesn't take very long uh to download. Um so but I, I trust you didn't have the opportunity to play anything on no, no, I went I went to bed. I actually wasn't able to play until like Friday afternoon, really. What? I um also wasn't able to play Zelda until uh Friday afternoon. Cuz you were waiting for the uh for my physical copies, yeah. yeah. Um so I got uh so you you already said uh Zelda and Snipper Clips, right? Those those are your games. Yep. Um and that's all I got. I got mm-hmm. uh all I picked up from Best Buy, like the only physical thing I've purchased is the machine is right? the machine mm-hmm. and i had i had purchased an sd card earlier right and that was it uh i think that's that's probably pretty smart um i i picked up the physical machine itself and uh ended up getting a a pro controller cuz the guy standing in front of me in line kind of talked me into it um and and then uh i had ordered my zelda and one two switch from amazon to get that Sweet, sweet twenty percent uh, Amazon Prime discount, um, and I, I feel I feel good about that. Like it, it just meant that I couldn't, you know, hit the ground running with Zelda. Like it, who cares? It was here by one o'clock in the afternoon. You know, um, it was fine. Um, but then I also uh, picked up right away um, three eShop games. I grabbed <clears throat> Snipper Clips. I grabbed the Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, uh, so I could play the Specter of Torment campaign. And uh, I am Setsuna. Um, to date, I have not started. I am Setsuna, and I did finish Specter of Torment. How on, long did that take on you? Sunday? My my game clock is about six hours on there, and it's like ten bucks, right? Yeah. So that seems very reasonable. Yeah, and also I love this game. Like it is, it and Snipper Clips are my like games of last weekend oh snipper clips is so good let's talk about snipper clips for a little bit <laughs> snipper clips is so much fun yes uh i played it last night was the first time i had the opportunity to play it because there is a one there is a single player mode um but it the only way i wanted to play it was multiplayer i didn't realize it went up to four players yeah yeah i i have not had the opportunity to do that yet uh either but um i'm, I'm excited to because the two player is so just like overcooked, it, it there's a lot of like kind of fighting in the room. <laughs> totally, I played with my boyfriend, mm-hmm. and like we were having fun, but also infuriating each other. Oh yeah, because we would just be like, <laughs> in a loving way, of course, be like, just turn, just rotate, or you know, and we'd like have different like strategies. Yes, and it'd be like, you know, and you'd be like, you'd be like. Let's just let's just do it my way. <laughs> I, I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> but then every time you like succeeded, it, it was it felt great. Yeah, it's well, yeah, it's really fun. It's really fun. It's got so much personality, um, and the the shapes. So there there is something like intimate about playing the game with someone that like you need to be able to get mad at them and you need to trust them and all of those things um but i feel like that intimacy is really well reflected in the little faces on the shapes um that they will as like one of them is cutting into the other like they'll be kind of giggling (laughs) and there's something weirdly sexual about like (laughs) them overlapping and being like I don't know. the The game feels very intimate to me. Yeah, I I I love it. And yeah, the uh, like you're saying, like the presentation has so much personality. Like mm-hmm. when they're up on their tippy toes, or when oh, they're like God. bending down, yeah. and they're like looking all like smarmy, like they did something a little bit naughty. Yep. Like it's so it's it's really. But also, I think it's um of the perfect all ages game because there's no penalty for like there's no timer. You can't fail. Um, if you, if something, there's always an easy reset. Yeah. Right. So like when something goes wrong, it's not, it's not really a big deal. Cause it's like, oh, I'll just regrow myself, you know, just like, I'll just regrow myself and we can try cutting again. Yeah. Or, um, oh, I'll just push the button and the pencil right. will drop reset over. Or, yeah, yeah. So it, it seems like the perfect thing for everybody to play together. Yeah. And I haven't played one, two switch. And so I can't speak to it. 
but it seems like Snipper Clips is more the game I would want to present as like here's like a fun way that the Switch allows us to play together. Yeah, well, I mean the this uh the thing that Snipper Clips has over One Two Switch is that it is immediately understandable how it is a video game. You know that like you give someone a controller and a character on the screen to control and they get it like instantaneously where uh one two switch which we can get into in a little bit uh is way more abstract than that and a lot more like kind of party game slash like improv game kind of thing where um snipper clips is just like this is a puzzle game you're playing together it's immediately understandable i love 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 snipper clips it's a great game and i almost can't believe that there was a period where we it wasn't a launch game oh yeah it it seems like it's it's vital to selling the thing. I I had um the, my switch with me at rehearsal on on Saturday, um and just like pulled it out and was like, this is, uh, there's no other game I would want to show a room full of people. Well, and that's I uh am bringing my switch to work tomorrow because some people were curious about it. Yeah, and you know like I'm sure we'll boot up Zelda. Right, but run around for two minutes for two minutes. But yeah. Snipper Clips I think is going to be a big hit. Yeah, because everyone will get a chance to play. And like the the other thing with Snipper Clips is that it's not the people playing the game aren't just the people who are holding the controller. If four people are in the room, everyone's shouting at the TV. Everyone has an idea on how to do something. Um and everyone's laughing when like they cut each other and they fall like <laughs> when you brought your uh switch over mm-hmm. to like your friends, did you bring the dock? No. Okay. I'm not. Yeah, I'm just planning on bringing the system itself. Yeah, j- just bring the system. I mean, if y- y- everyone that I've uh, brought it to that didn't already understand what it was, um, I can just say like, yeah. And if it's by my TV, I can just put it in the dock, and uh, then the whole thing's up on the TV. Have you been careful with sliding it in and out after these reports of um, like the dock scratching the screen from repeated? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, do, do you want to get into those like kind of uh, kind of generic issues that we've been like reading and or hearing about? Yeah, sure. We can talk about it a little bit. So I guess one of the things that is happening is that people are scratching their uh, the screen on their switch as they're docking it. Um, but it seems to me like you're just being careless or quick or so. I I I, I, I genuinely don't know. Um, it seems that some of the docks have gotten maybe like. Uh, like a little warped yeah a little warped and so because it 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 seems like not everybody's are and i think mine actually might be a little um bent inward Mm -hmm. uh so i've been careful i ended up buying from amazon it hasn't arrived yet a screen protector but i'm that's probably a good idea but i'm torn on that as well because there's like the official i didn't get the official like hoary one Mm -hmm. um the tempered glass because that has had reports of it like from the heat seemingly in that is generated in the dock Uh. like uh like coming off and warping yeah so i don't really know what a great solution is i can say i personally haven't run into issues yeah but i don't know that it's user error i think it might be just um, not super well. De- it does seem like the front, the inside front of the dock could be like felt lined or something. Yeah, right? it's weird to me. I mean, unless because people are custom doing it themselves. Uh-huh. And I don't know if it was left out, if Nintendo didn't do it for, again, like heat circulation concerns. Sure. Yeah, yeah right? that makes sense. Um, but also Nintendo in general is not... Com- when you buy an Apple product, whatever you think about Apple products, they are very concerned with... Uh, like tolerances Mm -hmm. and they're like every product is machine machined to be as close as possible to each other there's very little variation right Mm -hmm. yeah um nintendo does not share that you know like they they like a lot of uh consumer product designers and manufacturers don't share that concern yeah so it's very possible to me that um they are different. That like so, some of the docks have a little bit more give in them or something, so that it's bendier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, I don't. I don't know that it's user error. I don't know how big of a 
deal it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I guess I'm going to try out a screen protector. I mean, I, I'd be bummed out if after a day or two, I had a scratch on my screen. Because, totally. I mean, I, I do feel like it's going to happen at some point. The other thing that's in weird to me, not weird to me, but the other thing is that people are doing like drop tests of it yeah. and stuff like that. And because the screen is plastic, um, it doesn't seem to be scratching or breaking. That's good. And so where those two, you yeah, know, well, like where intersect, those data points meet. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the, but on the other hand, speaking of purely just like build quality, yeah, I'm very happy with it. Like I didn't realize the screen was pr- plastic. It makes sense now for durability reasons, but it still feels like a premium device. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and um, there's you when you're holding it by itself, you're almost never holding it holding the switch without the joy con on it um and the joy cons are they're awesome i love these things um like they they fit nicely in in my hand i like to play with um them separated just one in each hand um and so like my normal like interface with the with just the switch itself um in like handheld mode is with the joy cons in my hand like you're very seldom holding the thing all by itself um and so it, it does feel it feels like a, a, a premium consumer product uh i like the joy i like the joy cons too i've actually been playing zelda in the uh <clears throat> little doggy grip the mm-hmm. grip that comes with it and when i first booted it up i was not sure i was going to like it and i still think i'm going to eventually get a pro controller but i think they uh, it works yeah like i haven't been annoyed by the controller at all um it, it took me a little bit to get used to i feel like the placement of the right analog stick yeah is a little funky yeah but it's like a little low yeah it's yeah. like a just a little off but it uh yeah I, I think that the pro controller does address that um in, in a significant way it also makes all of the face buttons bigger um, but I think I could play through Zelda and ostensibly like any game, yeah, totally fine, yeah, with just the grip. Um, but yeah, when you open up the box, this is my first time seeing a Switch in person. So opening up the box, like the you r- recognize how tiny the console is. Oh yeah, it's it's like a big phone. Yeah, like it almost looks startlingly small. Yeah, when you open the box and it's just like huge a sea of cardboard a sea of cardboard around it and then this tiny thing and have you played in handheld mode very much uh yeah actually i um saturday morning i uh took it to the um laundromat because i had a bunch of laundry to do um and was like i'm just gonna take zelda with me (laughs) um so yeah i i played for you know a good like hour and a half then i've been using it uh, i played just for a little bit uh because I needed to charge my Joy Cons. Yeah. And uh, it it fe- it feels like a big handheld. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't. It's not too big. I agree with that. They kind of like split that difference very finely. It's it's a weird balance because uh the the tabletop mode when you've got the kickstand out, um it is obviously small, but it that also never feels like too small. Which is just like, yeah, it's a very fine line between like how big does this thing need to be versus how small does it have to be. Um, and I think they, I think they nailed it, really. Well, and especially when you consider how, uh, like powerful mm-hmm. that tiny little tablet is, basically. Yeah. Right. Like it, I think it's a super impressive feat of engineering that I don't really know if they're getting the credit I. Th- kind of think like is warranted yeah i mean if if anyone is talking about like the the technology in this thing they're saying like oh it's not as strong as the ps4 pro or the scorpio or whatever um no one even knows what that is yet (laughs) um but yeah it's it it seems like a genuinely impressive piece of hardware to me um in what it can do for its size and portability i've been really happy with the screen Mm-hmm. Um, on the portable. Yep, like, N- nice and really bright nice. and crisp. Yeah, um, yeah, and like the colors all seem great on it too. Like I, I think the display on it is 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 great. Yeah, so I feel like for all the compromises they had to make, they threaded the needle really well. Mm-hmm. 
Um, when you were when you took it to the laundromat, the one thing I was like, I feel like is the equivalent of fan uh, of wearing a fanny pack, where it's like, yeah, this is functional, but kind of looks stupid. Is a carrying case. So yeah. I was a hard no on a carrying case, but now I'm like, I have to get this to work somehow. Yeah, and what are you gonna do? Right, and so like. I guess like wrap it in a hoodie, you know, like wrap it in the, some of the sh- materials that came in in the box. I'll let so. you borrow my fanny pack. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, so I had it in, I, I've got like a, a messenger bag that I normally carry to work and there's a pocket on like the revert, like the inside of it um, that I don't normally put stuff in. And as a result, that pocket is very clean. So that's where, that's just where I've put the switch at any time I've traveled with it. Um, but it means I'm carrying this bag that's way too big to just have this piece of uh, yeah. I mean, I think I'm going to be putting it in my backpack and again, just like wrapping it in something. So it's not the best solution. So I guess I might end up getting a carrying case. I, I think I'm going to go carrying case. The too, quiet just... indignity of owning a switch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because at some point you're going to try to take the thing on a plane. Right? Totally. Um, and like you need a solution for that. And can I just say for a moment? You have to. There was a. <laughs> Otherwise, this would be over. Um. So there's, there was like a, a br- report going around or like some like meme floating around on Twitter about how like you can't use the it on an airplane because when you put on airplane mode, it turns off Bluetooth. Yeah. And, and so people are like, was Nintendo lying? And the answer is no. If you've used a- airplane mode on like an iPhone or an iPad, uh, and I, I can't speak for Android phones. But when you turn on airplane mode, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth go off automatically, but you can manually turn both of those things back on. So there you go. Also, just because they say put it on airplane mode doesn't mean you have to put it on airplane mode. Again, I don't endorse, you know, like Patrick's I don't know why you're saying again. (laughs) (laughs) This is the first we've talked about this. This is the first we've talked about this, but I don't endorse your slander against People who like anime, right, women, right, or Best Buy employees who right. are just doing their job. You're also not supporting my proven hiccup uh, <laughs> remedy. <laughs> no, but you should you should respect authority, and you're, <laughs> and, and you're stuck with hiccups. I'm sorry. Um, uh, so one of my items on my wish list. Oh, wow. wow. It, there's at least one of these in episode, and that's of my, like, awful... Where, where a word just falls apart. Tired. Yeah. <laughs> Wish list yes. was a fast, kind of minimalistic UI. Yeah. And I got that. You did get that. I, it was, what a relief to, like, turn it on and just have things fly. Yeah. It just uh, happens fast. And, and that's, again, mm-hmm. one, another reason why... I don't know that I can go back to my 3DS. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. I, I mean, I've, I've got the new 3DS, and even that, like the, <laughs> this sounds so stupid, but the thought of waiting <laughs> for 40 no, seconds. No, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't want it. Like uh, the, the, the Switch is so beautiful to just pick up and play seconds later. Um, that like I don't want to f- grab my 3DS, open it up, push a button hold it for a little bit, wait for it to come on, and then keep going. When, like, going to the eShop takes forever on the 3DS. Um, Now, it's a little bit of a monkey's paw situation because that's what I wanted, and that's what I got. And now I'm going to complain a little bit, like, we just had this great system music episode. Yeah. And no system music. So i've got a theory about that Mm -hmm. um and it's related to the music in breath of the wild Mm -hmm. um so there's not that much in the way of like big orchestrated music in breath of the wild um basically only happens during cutscenes, and like you get a theme in shrines and yeah but even that's kind of just more like the sort of chanting oh sure um like if, if when there is music it's more atmospheric um and uh a lot of times it's just the sounds of the world um and i think that it is partially just like coming at the game from a more like handheld or mobile perspective that like they're expecting you to be playing the game 
in a public place or somewhere where you're going to be not listening to to music in like an, an intense, you know, it's not a home theater experience necessarily. That's an interesting theory. I, I disagree. Okay. I think it's uh, aesthetic choices on, or like thematic choices on both fronts. Mm-hmm. I think Breath of the Wild is very like minimalistic in a lot of respects. And so I think the music, sure. you know, because even the music is uh, a lot of piano. Like I think, mm-hmm. so I think the uh, limited amount of music is stylistically appropriate for the game. And then I also think that uh, for the Switch, like system menus. Yeah. So like even in the eShop, uh, there's no music. When you are loading it up, there's like uh, some sound effects. Yeah, as you get like the loading screen, but I I think it's because just like with the switch itself, they are positioning it as a like if you're an adult, you don't have to be embarrassed owning this, right? Like yeah, we're cool too, and I think part of that it's in the minimalism of the UI, which is not fun, quote unquote, like the Wii U. Mm-hmm. I think I was quoting unquoting myself there. That's right. <laughs> You, you were know, being like, sarcastic about something you were saying and believing. <laughs> yeah, like you know, like the Wii U. Yeah, is um is very colorful and very like uh fun toy like. Whereas the Switch mm-hmm. itself, the system, the box, the presentation, everything, the advertising, uh, into the system UI is very minimal. Is very like, for lack of a better term, uh, mature like adult. Mm-hmm. And I think. Uh, system music is a uh, victim of that. Yeah, and I think that's uh, sort of what I was driving at. That like the a, a lack of system music feels more like a quality of a phone, um, which you know it may be that the phones have been trying to be cool and trying to be adult for so long, um, and so maybe that's why in my head that's part of the mobile experience. Oh, I see. I thought you were saying because uh you'd be like playing it in public and so they were so they were limiting the sound effects because yeah. you had like your speaker on. Yeah, I mean and and that would be a part of it. Just like you said like it's not embarrassing, right? So like this is a thing that you could take out into the world and if it's making funny noises while you're out in the world, that's embarrassing. Sure. Um but also, if it's making funny noises in your home and you're showing it to your friends, maybe that's embarrassing, too. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Um, but yeah, super happy with how quickly, like, how fast the UI is. Yeah. And we talked about in the past, I, uh, you know, that, yeah, we don't want, net. I don't need Netflix, I don't need Hulu on it. And, uh, I th- yeah, I still... Gotta have that web browser, though. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, yeah, do all my web browsing on gaming consoles i gotta be able to read my web comics on there <laughs> <laughs> um yeah uh so uh let's see what haven't we talked about yet as far as our like first weekend experience with it uh one two, like w- there's a lot of games that you like one two switch we haven't really and yeah we i don't know that have- we want to get into zelda in depth because i've have barely scratched the surface of that game where are you in zelda right now uh I mean, oh, wow. <laughs> Mark, oh, Mark, wow. I just like, pulls away from the garbage monster today. <laughs> and then comes back into it to burp into <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, so I've played for probably, I want to say like six to ten hours. Okay. But I have just barely got off the plateau. You're dying a lot. I am dying a lot. I die. I die a lot. So, but there's no penalty for doing it mm-hmm. for dying. And so, I think when I first got off the plateau, I went to an area that I am not a high enough level for, you know, or like whatever that means. <laughs> yeah. In this game, uh, but I did make it up one of the towers over there. So I. Oh, so you've got more because there were two guardians that like at first every time I tried to climb up it they would just shoot me down. Right, but I got the timing finally, uh, and was able to. And then I did one of the shrines there, but I got weapons that were way better than anything that I had gotten before. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I should not be in this area. Right. So I I went closer to the area where like that first, uh, when you get off when you get off the plateau, the old man is like. Um, like I don't jo- know how much we're gonna like spoil or like 
Well, maybe, maybe we should just stop then. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll have like a, a proper uh, Breath of the Wild discussion in a few weeks. Probably. In, in a couple weeks, yeah. I mean, like, um, I, I, I think, I think I'm going to be playing this game for a very long time. Yeah. Um, because I have not done any like main story quest stuff, whatever. That other is, than yeah. to get off the plateau. Uh, so you you have not gotten to uh, Kakariko Village yet? No. Okay. Um. Yeah, I, I, I got I got there last night. Yeah, I'm just enjoying like really just like exploring and the thing that's amazing about this game is uh, I I genuinely I think this game is amazing so far. Mm-hmm. And the thing that is amazing to me about it is anytime I'm like I wonder if I can do this. I wonder if I can or uh, you know like I wonder if the game will allow me to do this or I wonder if the game will allow me to get to this area. The answer is always yes. Always yes. Yeah. When when you're like, there's no way I can scale this. Like this is just an obstacle. Right. I'm or there's like, get past it. there's no way that I can, uh, like shoot my arrow at this thing and have it do like this thing I want it to do. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, uh, and the answer is yeah, you can. Yeah, you can do this these things every time. And you're like, uh oh, I've run out of arrows. I'm gonna just like bait this bokoblin to like shoot arrows at me for a while and then pick them up off the ground. Yeah, and just like environmental stuff like climbing trees. Mm-hmm. Um. And I love that <laughs> there, there was a, uh, a story on uh, Kotaku today that when uh, Miyamoto was first introduced to Breath of the Wild, he just kept climbing trees <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that they were like, no, like, go, go do other things. And he was like, I like climbing the trees. <laughs> um, and I, I love like, so the plateau is basically your... Um, like introduction it's mm-hmm. it's like the tutorial yeah but like, in a very non like directed at all right but way. it's like a safe environment for you to test out things and there are enemies but you can and you might die but you know like you are powerful enough from the beginning to take out all the enemies on the right. plateau there's only one guardian on the plateau and it's like half buried like it's not gonna run it's not gonna chase you down there are no scary rock demons <laughs> uh so yeah the, the the plateau is manageable yeah and it acts as like oh i can try all these different things but it's kind of a safe environment mm-hmm. to do it um and so by the time you get off the plateau you have a fairly good grasp on the capabilities uh and like your capabilities as link um it's just a re. It's I think it's just a beautifully designed game. Yeah, uh, agreed. And also, I I feel like the the game is excellent at funneling you to points of interest. Um, just with like I don't know if it's just visual cues or what, but I I never feel like I'm wandering off into like w- without knowing that I'm doing it. You know, um, I'm not getting lost, but it still feels like I'm genuinely exploring. And the game is so. <clears throat> clearly designed mm-hmm. but you still feel the sense of discovery yeah like there's a part where uh like there's a ravine and i want to get across to the other side and so i'm like okay how do i do this uh oh i can chop down a tree the tree falls down you can walk across the log to get there and clearly that is the way that puzzle is supposed to be not even puzzled that is the way that it is designed mm-hmm. to get across there yeah but I felt like I was discovering it. I felt like I was like hacking the game. Right. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of that where you're like, like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I be- oh, I could probably move that thing with Magnesis. I bet. Will, will the game let me do this? And the answer is always yes, um, that the game lets you do it. Um, so, yeah, what a great game. I can't wait to really throw more time into it. Now, tell me about 1-2 Switch because I'm skeptical. You're right to be skeptical. It's not... Um, a wonderful experience but it is uh it's novel and interesting and fun um so uh it came on saturday and whatever reason it came a day later than um zelda did for me um you bought these through amazon right? that's right yeah. because the switch launch for a lot of amazon uh amazon customers was kind of a disaster yeah um, what about that uh that there were like um the zelda special edition pre uh pre-orders that were just like straight up canceled yeah Amazon. Yeah, it w- I think we've talked about off mic how Amazon has really been slacking in my mind recently. Yeah, step it up, Amazon. Yeah. Uh 
We're taking everybody to task here. <laughs> Best Buy, Amazon. The only one I'm on board for is Amazon. <laughs> All right. Well, I will win you over to my side by the end. Um, so, uh, so Sarah and I played a bunch of it, um, just the two of us in the apartment, and it it feels like that that's not enough to just have two people in like a normal environment playing it. Um, I can see it being fun to have a couple friends over for drinks and playing it but like it, that has to be the point of the gathering um if you're in a regular party situation and someone pulls out one two switch it's gonna be like no the guy with the acoustic guitar <laughs> it's right uh, or Car- <coughs> karen from the switch reveal video <laughs> where everyone's like oh, karen brought her dumb nintendo <laughs> thing um yeah we're the guy with the acoustic guitar <laughs> um yeah because the the it's too um a lot of the game relies on um, audio clues um, or audio cues, um, you know, like when you're supposed to draw or whatever. And um, if there's music or people are talking or having a good time, like it's going to get in the way of playing the games. Um, and the games aren't fun enough to warrant like trumping uh, a conversation or getting drunk or whatever. So, I don't know. I'm I'm going to I'm going to try to play with other people, you know, on on other occasions and see um if the experience warms at all. Um but like it it, it is neat. It's, some of the games are actually fun. Um do you choose the game you can, that you want yeah. to play or is it it's not just random? You there is a random mode um or you can uh pick the individual games. Uh the weird thing is there's no like you you can't like pick one game and then have it present like harder and harder difficulties of it like it's kind of just like this is the game that's all there is to it it doesn't really get more complicated have you done the infamous milking the cow yeah we i've i've played most of the games on there um sarah and i had a unexplainable amount of fun with the answering the telephone game <laughs> you put the you put the weaver modes down on the ground and you sit there with your hands on your knees and wait for the correct phone ringtone, and then you pick it up and pull it next to your head and say hello. You don't actually have to say hello. <laughs> there's, there's no microphone, but like you do it anyway. Yeah, does the, the uh, Joy-Con don't have speakers on them, right? No, or no microphones. No speakers or microphones? That's right. Uh, so, but I, I, like, there's no, I haven't felt 3D rumble yet, because there's, or HD rumble. Yeah, so that that is one thing that uh, the One Two Switch does. It's got tons of HD rumble in it, um, I- including there's the the ball counter game where you rotate the um, right the Joy-Con See around. See how many you're in. How many? How is that? Is it cool? Like, is HD rumble cool? I am not a believer at oh, this gotcha. point. Like, I know I've read and heard so many accounts of people being like, "Oh, the HD rumble, you you'll believe it when you feel it." Um, and I have felt it and I'm like, I cannot tell you how many ball, how many pretend balls are inside this thing. Like whatever illusion it's trying to cast on me isn't working. Um, and I don't know if that's a failing of the hardware or like my meat hardware. (laughs) My my hands are just so indelicate that I can't. bad hands. Bad hands. (laughs) Hashtag large man hands. (laughs) We're big men. We are big men. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. And there's, um, there, there's a, a mode on this, on uh one, two switch that like turns the whole thing into a board game. I haven't tried that yet. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I don't have super high hopes for it, but again, 20% discount, get that baby for like 40 bucks. It's still an expense, but it's not, you know, but I understand now why it's not a pack in. Uh, why is that? What would be, it doesn't seem like it's a great. Yeah, showcase. Sure. Yeah, like of uh, what the switch can actually do. Yeah, if s- uh, snipper clips should be the the pack in, and it, snipper clips is only twenty bucks. And if this sounds like a commercial for snipper clips, is because I love that game. Because we are brought to you today by <laughs> snipper clips. Snipper clips, man, that would be great. What a good sponsor that would be. <laughs> um, and then other than that, I played all the way through the Shovel Knight Specter of Torment uh campaign, uh. I thought it was great. I played it. You sh- were showing it off a little bit, mm-hmm. and I was playing with it, and I love the mechanics of it. The yeah, the the way the traversal is so good and so fast, um, and so fun. Um, you know, 
uh, here I am, first weekend with a new console, new Zelda game, and I'm like, nope, <laughs> I'm going to play the new Shovel Knight campaign. Um, I loved it. Like, cannot speak highly enough about it. Um, I, and I, I keep thinking about, like, going back and just playing it again uh, or wrapping up some of the, like, little things I didn't, I didn't finish in it. And this, there's a story in it that, that's uh, well told and moving. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the, the last campaign whenever it comes out. Um, do we have anything else to say about our first weekend with the Nintendo Switch? Yeah, so I ha- haven't run into any of the hardware problems that mm-hmm. people are reporting. Uh, you know, like the dock, scratching the screen, the left Joy-Con disconnecting. Yep. Um. I think it's kind of gross that Nintendo. So some people with like anything with LCD screens uh, are like some people are getting their switches and it has dead pixels. Yeah. And Nintendo's like, it's not in their official support. It's like, it's not a defect. It's that's just how like some LCDs are. And defective. I, yeah. Like I agree that that happens with every lcd product ever and i agree it's you could i guess argue it's not a defect but i think the good customer service thing is to replace those people's systems yeah i think so too especially because like right now it's like having the thing now is such a big part of you know your pre-order you're standing in line you're spending three hundred dollars yeah these are like your biggest champions yeah support those people yeah um, when people buy it a year from now, screw those oh, people. Screw those people. Where were Where they? were you? Where were you at midnight <laughs> on a Thursday? <laughs> um, but yeah, I it, I am very happy with it. Oh, I, here's a question I had. Um, have you taken it out in the wild at all? No, not yet. Okay, so it's it's all been. In, yeah, I was very Microsoft. protective yeah. of it because, like, so I wasn't able to play it f- Friday. Until the like later in the afternoon, because I just had like a bunch of errands to run. Yeah, and in my head I was like, oh, I get, I could take it with me, I guess. Um, because there were a few times where I was like going somewhere and then just sitting for a little bit. Yeah, but I felt too protective of it. Right, yeah. I felt too like, oh, I don't, I, uh, I wanted, especially because I wanted my first like Zelda experience to be sitting down, mm-hmm. just. Being able to like really like experience it and not have to worry about everything else that was going on. Yeah. Well, and also there's you know we're still working out. Is there a a, a way that I can transport this thing? Are we getting carrying cases? Are we just going straight fanny packs? Like <laughs> what? I joke that I kind of want like just a bandolier that I can just pull it off my chest. Um, that would be fun. That'd be fun. Um, kickstart that internet. <laughs> yeah, kickstart it internet. Um, a switch bandolier. Uh, I, I brought mine out to um, Bon Vivant. Uh, this is a oh, like, yeah. restaurant bar place uh, near my house. Um, on Saturday after you left, um, Sarah was drinking over there, and she said, "Hey, join me." And I said, "Okay." And I didn't tell her I was bringing the switch, <laughs> but I brought the switch. Um, so we just set it up on a table and played snipper clips for a while. Um, and it was neat to have people come over and be like, "Hey, what are you doing? What is that?" And being like, it's the new Nintendo thing. I saw somebody have one at Ikea oh, awesome. on Saturday. They had the um, neon Joy-Con. Yeah. So we both got gray. Yeah. And gray. Uh, gray. Dour, like our attitudes. We are big men. <laughs> uh, and the I don't, I don't love the neon in any of the promotional images. But in real life, it doesn't look bad. Okay. Um. So, uh, yeah, I, I like I like the gray a lot, but I can see the appeal of the neon. Mm-hmm. I think I would want them to be the same color. Yeah, I, I think that, and you know, they're selling the the sets of them now that yeah. are a s- solid color. But but I think the neon look much more appealing in person than sure. I had seen it in like the promotional images. Yeah, I mean, if I end up getting another set of them, or God forbid, another switch. It might happen. Sarah's enjoying this thing. Yeah, a whole nother system. Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe. I mean, why not? Why not? 
Yeah, I, I I don't think it's that expensive. I actually feel like it's a li- like a no. fair price point after, especially after like having it. Yeah, and like if you're going to, if if you're like okay, I'm either gonna get another set of Joy Cons or I'm gonna buy the Switch. Like this, another set of Joy Cons is seventy dollars. Like. Just throw in the extra two hundred dollars and <laughs> and get another whole I system. I can't tell if you're serious or not because <laughs> no. Okay, so I, I'm I'm half serious that that like I don't know the two two hundred dollars is obviously a real amount of money. Well, it's three hundred. I know, but I'm saying the and that's before tax. The different <laughs> I know that the difference between getting an extra set of Joy Cons and getting the it's like three times as much. I know I know that that's I'm saying the difference between them though is right. like $200. Uh-huh. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying if Well, Daddy Warbucks over here. <laughs> I'm just I mean, I get what you're I stand, saying. I stand by what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah, but I mean to your point that like $300 for what this thing is and what it can do um doesn't seem like that much. Right. Um, and if like, you're already starting to like, well, if I want to get a a complete experience with this one, um, you know, I'm just saying if it it makes it more likely that I'll probably get a a second one of these. No, I can absolutely like genuinely, I can see that. And yes, if you are comparing the, like the PS4 to, uh, a switch Mm -hmm. and you're like, I can get the PS4 for 50 bucks less. I am genuinely shocked I'm saying this, but I still think, I don't, you know, like, the Switch, in my mind, will not replace a PS4 in your life. No. Unless you are, a, like, a diehard Nintendo fan. Because um, it's just not going to get the third-party exclusives that you're going to get on a PS4 or an Xbox One. Right. But I think as a value prospect... I don't feel ripped off paying three hundred dollars for a switch. Yeah, not at all. I mean, it it seems it almost seems like a super deal. Like I was showing it to someone at work today, uh, and they were like, "Whoa, how much is this thing?" I said three hundred bucks, and he was like, "Spend seven hundred dollars on an iPad, you know?" Yeah. And, it's, and like, it's obviously a different device used for something different. But like, yeah, great point. If you're buying an iPad to play games with it, like. That makes way less sense than getting the the switch. Yeah, I for like half the price. Yeah, I I really think so. And we were like debating the price, and before it came out, and I mm-hmm. was like, oh, two forty nine. And when it was revealed, I was like, ah, three hundred is too is just like too much. But now that I actually have it and playing it, I feel like I paid a fair price for it. Yeah, I don't know that I'd want to pay more, but Mark, what if I told you <laughs> you could pay a little bit more for it? <laughs> Not hard pass. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I think that that's a, a good look at our first uh, 48 hours, 72 hours, however long it's been. More than that, even. It's been almost a week uh, with the with, uh, Nintendo Switch. Uh, and it's getting late. And I don't have a reader question, uh, listener reader question to uh, read to us. Oh, I know we played the theme music, but I did have a question for you. And I posted on Twitter. And so I am interested in other people, Mm. their experiences with the Switch and also their experiences with Breath Breath of the Wild. Yes. Because in Breath of the Wild, as part of the like upgrade system, you can get a heart container. Or you can get more stamina. Yes. And I have been playing, I've been getting two, what I've been doing is like splitting the difference and getting like two heart containers for every stamina. Like that's my plan. Okay. And I'm wondering if that's good or if I should be like devoting one to the other. Like what have you been doing? Just hearts. Okay. I'm, I always prioritize hearts. I don't necessarily know that's uh, a good choice, but when we were playing uh, original Zelda, it was like any time we could choose between a red potion or a heart, a heart piece, a heart container, I guess. I'm always heart container. I'm like, yes, max HP, max HP, max HP. Yeah, no, I feel that way, but I'm also like, I, with stamina, I'd be able to like climb a little bit more and just things like things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, that's actually uh, just in, in general. Uh, I would love if next week we could uh, read a bunch of um, listener reader um, reactions to their first uh, days with the Switch and with Breath of the Wild, um, even if you're playing it on uh, Wii U, because uh, it would be. I mean, it's just fun to hear how people are experiencing this game. So uh, if you uh, would be so kind to write in with your experiences to Nintendo Cartridge Society at gmail.com, that'd be um, awesome. Or shoot us a note on Twitter. Yeah, or on uh, Facebook. You can post on our, our page, which is just um, Nintendo Cartridge Society. And on Twitter, we're Nincart Society. Um, that's going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Remember... We would love it if you would rate and review us and subscribe to us on iTunes. There is still a contest coming. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. I was really holding out for a NES Classic Edition. I don't think they're being made anymore. I think, th- uh, yeah, I think they're phantom machines yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't think that's going to happen. But, uh, yeah. Something. Something. Something will come your way. Yep. Um. Uh, and that's all just rating, reviewing us on iTunes and shooting us an email to be like, hey, that one was me. Um, and, you know, tell your friends. We're just getting around word of mouth. If you, uh, if you like what you hear here, um, tell someone else about it, maybe. Also, if you like Mark and Mind's opinions, we write about comic books on retconpunch.com. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by 8 Betty. You can check out 8 Betty's music on 8 or by listening to this music right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Eller saying, always go with the heart container. Thanks for listening. Podcast Network.